Hey guys, so I got another interesting case that I did a Palma Vista on and I'd like to talk about it. So this is a 69 year old lady. She has chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension and right sided heart failure due to that. She uh, is currently in the ICU. I have the CT scan um, radiology report. I can pop up over here. Let me read it through quickly. This is the uh, ventilation and perfusion lung scan. So this was to rule out chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension. This examination is compared to the previous ventilation perfusion lung scan that was performed in 2021. For the ventilation study, so this is the most important for this specific um, video, there is a complete absence of ventilation throughout the left lung field. Ventilation was present on the previous examination, September 25th, 2021. Only the right lung is ventilated and demonstrates moderate heterogeneous bio distribution of radio tracer stables, stable as compared to the previous study on uh, September in uh, 2021. The perfusion study. So there is again four perfusional segmental deficits noted within the right lung unchanged as compared to the previous study that was in 2021 and presence of one new deficit within the medial basal segment of the right lobe, lower lobe. Within the left lung field there is new perfusion deficit noted with a super or dorsal segment of the left lower lobe. So the impression or the, the conclusion of the report. There is evidence of two new perfusion deficits, one located within the medial basal segment of the right lower lobe and the second located within the super dorsal segment of the left lower lobe in keeping with high probability of a pulmonary embolism. In addition, there is a complete absence of ventilation throughout the lung field for which the preferential diagnosis is large, including a mass obstructing the airway, left pneumothorax, or central pulmonary embolism. So it could be any one of these based on the uh, nuclear medicine. Further investigation with CT scan angio is recommended in this patient. So all this uh, to say is we have a lady, high FO2, refractory hypoxemia, known for chronic th thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension, right-sided heart failure, and now on the CT scan, you have a complete collapse of the left side. There's absolutely no aeration on the CT scan. I, um, I put the CT uh, scan image. I didn't videotape it. I scrolled through the hearts a lot in the way, but there is literally no aeration on the left lung. This is a... Uh, this video that I'm doing is because I did a Palma Vista 500 on the patient. So I did an electrical impedance tomography. And I always find it really cool when we have some like nuclear medicine reports or recent CT scans so that we can kind of look at these reports and compare to the electrical impedance tomography and see how well they correlate. This lady was uh, has been on OptiFlow. So when I saw the report and the respirologist talking about the left-sided uh, collapse uh, suggested doing BiPAP. So I have the Palma Vista on prior to, to the BiPAP. And then after I have it, when we, uh, we put it on, I wasn't videotaping it. I was just kind of taking snapshots. So it's not really as dynamic as some of my videos of me holding the camera the whole time, but it's still uh, very interesting. So let's see what happens when I put the BiPAP on and see if we can improve the ventilation, if we can open up that left side of the lung. All right, let's do it, guys. So the middle square up above, that's the patient on OptiFlow. So it's very clear that the only distribution of ventilation is going in the right dorsal and right mid dorsal. Virtually zero distribution of ventilation on the left side. There's also poor distribution of ventilation on the right ventral and mid-ventral area. So the other square over here on the top right of the screen, this is the BiPAP with settings of PEEP of 12, 
pressure support of 10, the FIO2 on OptiFlow was 50%, and immediately was able to reduce that within a half an hour to 30 and then to 25. So we see that on this image, we have a opening up of the dorsal region. We also have an improvement in the distribution to the right middle the right mid dorsal and the right mid ventral. So the square on the top left, this is always going to be a color coded way of expressing what's happening in the distribution of ventilation. So we see with the OptiFlow, it's just on the right lower side, the right dorsal primarily. And when you compare that to the BiPAP settings, we see that there's a opening up and an increased distribution of ventilation to the dorsal region on the left, as well as the mid-dorsal, mid-ventral, and even a little bit up to the ventral area. So this is an increase in the distribution of ventilation during BiPAP compared to the OptiFlow. We can also look at the impedance curves that are suddenly rise, and this actually represents a recruitment of the functional residual capacity. We will next look at the image of the end expiratory lung impedance, and you're gonna see that there's a large, large amount of volume. There's 3.66 times the amount of air at the end of expiration. Uh, so a, a, a massive recruitment in the functional residual capacity with the BiPAP. Here we're looking at the and expiratory lung volume, the right numbers, the 3.66, that's the global impedance value. Remembering that the way the electrical impedance tomography makes this image is that it's calculating the changes in impedance. When there's more aeration in an area, the impedance values increase. When there's, a, there's less, aeration, the impedance values will be lower and decrease. So we see that there is 3.66 global re, um, recruitment of the functional residual capacity. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have <clears throat> this uh, EIT machine, the Palma Vista, attached to a V500. So we actually don't have the settings, the PEEP, the tidal volume, as well as the peak inspiratory pressures. And we, because we don't have the tidal volume, we can't, we can't translate the impedance values into actual volume in milliliters. But what it is telling us is that there's a massive recruitment, that the impedance is 3.6 times the amount that was on OptiFlow. We see a very good increase in the functional residual capacity, especially on uh, the dorsal area on both sides, as well as the mid dorsal and then uh, mid-ventral and ventral also has a significance. So this patient is extremely recruitable. The collapsed lung is easily inflated with, with positive pressure. Over here, I'm just posting about two hours into the BiPAP se session, a snapshot of the distribution of ventilation. What a, a far, what a huge difference compared to the tiny blue blotch that we had in the, the right dorsal and mid-dorsal region. So a very, very good response to the BiPAP. This is BiPAP, PEEP of 12, pressure support of 10. All right, this is the removal of the BiPAP. We're gonna put the patient on OptiFlow for a meal. Obviously, we're touching the patient. There's gonna be some infer interference. All right, this is off BiPAP. All right, so now the patient's settled down. And the nurse is gonna to touch the patient again. <laughs> So this is off of the BiPAP. So definitely the right side is maintaining itself pretty good. Unfortunately lost most of the left side at the moment. But this was just a couple of hours on uh, BiPAP. So 
we're going to consistently use the BiPAP uh, more intensively than I think we're, we're going to get this patient over uh, the hump. Oh, this is too hot? Okay, I, I'll adjust here the, the temperature. He will uh, adjust it. Yeah, we started Presidex, um, so as you know with Presidex, we got to you know go up slowly, but we're going to use Presidex to help with uh, the patients uh, tolerating the BiPAP mass. Here we're looking at the end inspiratory panel. So we see in the middle that was the BiPAP and on the right uh, top right of your screen that's when we return to OptiFlow so basically the distribution of inhalation returned exactly how it was before you can see at the left top of your screen the orange that's a representation of the loss of distribution of ventilation compared to the BiPAP all right thanks again everyone please share and subscribe and press the notification bell all right, see ya.